Veterinarians of Reddit, what common mistakes are we making with our pets? I'm a vet, not letting your dogs around other dogs until they have all their vaccines. Their socialization window closes about 14 weeks, meaning it is pretty much closed if you wait until 16 weeks. This causes a lot of dogs to go nuts and freak out whenever they see something they didn't see during that period. Notice, I didn't say take them to the dog park. They need to be around other dogs and other people in controlled situations. Puppy socialization classes, friends' houses, etc. Make sure the dogs they're around are healthy, vaccinated, and good with puppies. And let them have positive experiences with other dogs and people. Obviously never get behind on their vaccines while you're doing this. Expose them to your tall friends, your friends of different races, your friends with beards, hats, sunglasses. Pull out the broom, an umbrella, and iron board, while giving them treats and having fun the whole time. Try to let them walk on slick floors, bricks, carpet, etc., so they won't have any fears of those things. And always be happy. Every positive, happy interaction with something makes them less afraid. Every lack of exposure or negative interaction makes them more afraid. Your dog is your friend not your slave. Your goal isn't to make him do exactly whatever you want no matter what. It's to make him have good manners, but also let him have his own preferences too. You're not training him like he's in the circus to do a bunch of stuff for your amusement. You're teaching him how to move safely in the world, which means not doing something, biting, urinating in the house, jumping uncontrollably, that will be a threat to his life someday. More dogs are surrendered and euthanized for behavior reasons than any other. Story 2. Not socializing slash training puppies. Socialize- Socialization, not just other dogs, to people, cats, men in hats, vet care, foot touching, handling, bathing, car rides, etc, 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 basic dog behavior and development knowledge, and positive reinforcement training with just a few basic commands can be the difference between a well-adjusted dog in a loving home and a dog with persistent behavior issues being surrendered to a shelter. Edited to say, I'm not a veterinarian, former vet tech with five plus years experience. Please utilize your family vet as the primary resource for questions. They know the most about your pet and they're there to help you, and may recommend a referral to a veterinary behaviorist. If you're looking for a nice behavior resource, check out Denver Dumb Friends League website. Story 3. Veterinarian here. Getting and relying on medical advice from breeders and groomers with no medical background. I once saw a rat terrier with a fractured humerus, which typically requires surgical correction. As I stepped out of the room to check availability with a surgeon, the client called the dog's breeder, who said to not follow my advice, and to just put the dog in a sling, and that she's done it on her own dogs plenty also not exercising dogs enough. Many behavioral problems can be solved with ample exercise daily. Story 4. Vet here. Grain-free is 100% marketing. You're paying extra for no benefit at all. While we're on the subject, byproducts should not specifically be avoided. Pets need nutrients, not ingredients. Spay and neuter. Why owners elect not to do this astounds me, considering the number of conditions that can be prevented by this simple procedure. If you can't afford to drop $200 to $300 once per year on your pet, you shouldn't have a pet. This covers only the basic routine services a pet should receive once yearly. Exams, preventative medications and testing, vaccines, etc. If you have a pet, set aside a specific emergency fund for this pet. Depending on the condition, a few hundred bucks can save a life. On a similar note, don't get a Great Dane and act surprised that medications for a 150-pound dog are more expensive. And listen to your veterinarian. The breeder said is not a valid excuse for anything. It doesn't take much to put two dogs in a room and wait 60 days. Why people say this to a veterinarian is beyond me. Your breeder makes money on making sure each dog produces a large number of viable offspring. Nothing more. Please vaccinate for the conditions your veterinarian recommends. When they recommend them. If you're not willing to spend the appropriate amount of time training and exercising your high-energy dog, get a fish. If you don't have any experience with any dog in the working class, please at least put in the time to research and then train your GSD, GSP, etc. Do not purchase a pet for someone else as a surprise. Getting a pet is a 10-20 to 20 year commitment and shouldn't be dumped on an unwilling or unable family member slash girlfriend or whatever. And not really a mistake, but more of a PSA. Veterinarians have one of, if not the highest rate of ending their own lives by profession. This is influenced by high stress environment, desire to save every pet, inability to cope with a mistake, misdiagnosis or lost pet, high student loan debt, access to euthanasia, slash other drugs, view on euthanasia, etc. Please be kind to your veterinarian. In the last thread with vets, there was also a bunch of comments about people listening to breeders over the vets. That's so strange to me. I don't know why you'd ever do that. One of them is a licensed professional for health, and the other just breeds dogs. I figured it would be expected to listen to the health professional for health reasons, but I guess not. Story 5. I'm seeing a lot of dog and cat posts, so I'll throw one in about snakes. Snakes are not supposed to sneeze or cough. They lack diaphragms. So if yours does this, take it to the vet immediately. Please, 
please do not drive with your snake free roaming. This is extremely unsafe for the snake, as it causes stress and could get stuck somewhere while you're driving. Different snakes require different beddings, humidity levels, enrichment, etc. Just because it works for corn doesn't mean it's meant for a ball python. It is best and highly recommended to feed frozen to snakes. This is because live rodents can be dangerous to the snake if the snake doesn't want to eat. I've seen so many dead snake pets due to this. And also easier storage. If your snake prefers a more lively meal, try dancing or running said dead mouse around the tank for it to attack. Understand your snake and stress. Do not humanize your snake into thinking that it's behaving in a mammal-slash-human-like way. It could be showing signs of clear stress and you're seeing it as, oh, look at its sassy face. You can love your reptile while also respecting its boundaries. This is my personal rant-slash-tip. If you want a cool look-at-me accessory, may I suggest a new hairdo, a cool jacket, or literally anything else besides a snake. These animals are surprisingly delicate to their environments and require everyday husbandry. You scaring people with it or using it as a way to get chicks is not helping the reputation of these pretty awesome creatures. They have fears, intelligence, and likes and dislikes like any other animal. They are not breathing jewelry. Reptiles in general are very complex pets to keep healthy. Do your research, please. Learn the diets, the vitamins, the lights, the humidity, etc. These animals can live to be over 20, yet rarely do, due to poor husbandry. And my tip for all animals in general is enrichment. Play with your pets, train them, give them puzzles, new toys, new hiding boxes, etc. Literally anything to keep their minds and bodies fit. These creatures rely on us for their whole lives. They don't have phones, TVs, or books. They have us, their owners. It's our responsibility to keep them entertained and living full lives. Even a fish could enjoy some new plants and scenery every once in a while. It always surprises me how many people are willing to get a pet without doing any research at all. That is a living creature. And some living creatures are very particular about how they live. Just shocking that people don't know this. Story 6. I'm a vet. I can list a million things I wish owners would understand about their pet's health. But equally important is understanding that if you can't afford basic veterinary care, then you cannot afford a pet. Period. This is an industry with serious mental health concerns. We are routinely presented with cases that could have been avoided if you practiced the suggested preventative care or brought your pet in for evaluation once the symptoms started, rather than waiting six weeks until the animal is beyond help. We are routinely berated by the public for being uncaring or having no compassion for not providing our services for free. Though often, veterinary diagnostics are performed at a fraction of the cost of human diagnostics, and the turnaround time is considerably shorter. I do not want to euthanize your beloved family member, but if you have no ability to cover the estimated cost of care, you put us both in an unfortunate situation. The fact that I have to euthanize multiple pets on a daily basis is one of the worst parts of my job. Sometimes it's unavoidable, but oftentimes a traumatic end could be prevented with yearly basic checkups. Also, please don't expect me to cry over every euthanasia. If I didn't distance myself from the heart-wrenching sadness, I would never be able to perform my job. Story 7. I'm graduating as a veterinarian in a few months. One of the most common things we see, and a very serious issue at that, is dental disease in pets. And often the owner has no idea that their animal's teeth are bad at all. Dental disease affects all body systems. Bacteria and dental disease go hand in hand. And those bacteria end up all throughout the body, affecting organs such as the kidneys and the heart. And not to mention, it freaking hurts. Some owners are under the impression that because their animal is still eating, that must mean they don't have an oral health issue. The truth of it is, you eat or you starve. I like to tell people that the most common symptom you'll see in dental disease, besides of course the yucky mouth, is no symptoms. I've seen a lot of owners comment how their dog or cat is like, they're young again, after getting a much needed dental treatment, specifically the extraction of diseased teeth. Arguably the most important aspect of oral care that you can do at home is toothbrushing, optimally every single day with a veterinary toothpaste. Outside of that, regular physical examinations and professional dental cleanings under general anesthesia when necessary. Unfortunately, anesthetic-free dental cleanings may do more harm than than good, including giving you a false sense of security of your pet's dental health. Another common and emerging issue is obesity in pets. Your pets depend on you and you alone to regulate the amount of food you provide to them, and thus, their weight. Obesity, like dental disease, affects all body systems, and unfortunately will often translate to a shorter lifespan. In general, please do not provide any kind of medical slash pharmaceutical treatment to your animals without consult to a veterinarian, as sometimes you'll do something harmful when you're just trying to help, which is simply tragic. Story 8. Common Mistakes 1. Declawing pet cats. Unless someone in the house is immunocompromised, it's considered inhumane. Contrary to what most people think, it isn't simply taking off a nail. It's a literal digit amputation of the distal phalanx. That's like cutting your fingers off at the last knuckle. 2. Letting a declawed cat outdoors. They can't defend themselves and will die. Edit. As some people have pointed out, they will die is not necessarily true. 
more likely they will be horribly mauled or injured due to being largely defenseless. Is this an absolute certainty? No. But it's very possible. If you care about your pet, you should not want this in the realm of possibility, but what the hell do I know? 3. Not neutering your pets. They will lead arguably longer and happier lives if they're fixed. Edit. Happier lives. Cuts down aggressive slash unwanted behavior, which is usually the leading cause of being returned to a shelter for being bad and misbehaved. Healthier lives. No chance of death during pregnancy or any kind of reproductive cancers, such as testicular, prostate, ovarian, uterine, etc. But once again, what the hell do I know? 4. Never taking your pet in for an annual checkup. Things change in our pet's bodies faster than they do in ours. Think of their lifespan as opposed to a human's. I'm sorry my thermometer in your pet's tush is a bit uncomfortable, and the mere sight of me gets him trembling. Believe me, when I went into this profession, I wasn't expecting animals to dread coming to see me. But 15 minutes in the clinic, one day out of 365, is the least you can do for an animal that loves you unconditionally. 5. Giving your pets... People medicine. A lot of the things we can ingest may be toxic to animals. You can end your pet even with the best of intentions. 6. Waiting for weeks or days to rush in with an emergency. Chances are your pet has been in considerable pain. Treatment may be more complex slash difficult and your bill will be much, much higher. 7. Equating food with love. Pet obesity is a real thing. You could be taking years off of your pet's life and causing them painful joint issues by overfeeding. 8. Feeding a raw diet. Animals can get food poisoning too. Make sure to talk to your vet to ensure your pet's diet adheres to certain species-specific guidelines. Edit. As many people have pointed out, their pets are on vet slash AAFCO approved raw diets. Fine. As long as you're not throwing your pets whole chickens and calling it holistic. Also, I was thinking of cats and dogs when I wrote this. I should have been clear that there are exceptions for every species. Let your snake do its raw, snaky thing. 9. Make your pets vegan or vegetarian because you are. Cats absolutely need essential amino acids that can only be found in meat. They will die otherwise. 10. Neglect dental health. This is a common issue we see at the office. Address oral health early and it'll save you money and your pet's teeth. If you're reading this, chances are you love your pet. So thank you for being responsible owners. Story 9. One year away from being a full-blown vet. Worked as a technician for four years before vet school. Please don't ignore cats screaming or looking constipated. They're likely suffering a urinary blockage and they can die. Please bring them to a vet. For overfeeding, it's not as much the food as the K-Cals. Read the bag. There are plenty of calculators online that will give you an idea of how much your pet should be eating. Then compare that to the food you have and measure out what's appropriate. And please, please be kind to your vet. It is all too often we're being accused of being in this for the money. We aren't. Most of us take on huge loans to the tune of $200,000 to be your pet's doctor. We also have one of the highest rates of ending our own lives as far as profession goes. Please keep that in mind before you leave a mean review. We take failure personally, trust me. There may be some exceptions, but I speak for me and my colleagues. We love your pets too. That's why we spent eight plus years getting to be their doctor. Story 10. Former vet tech here. Few things. 1. Spay slash neuter your pets. No, Fifi does not need to have a litter, and it might actually endanger her health to do so. There are too many unwanted dogs slash cats in the world. Please don't add to the burden. 2. Microchip your pet and keep the information updated. It is usually the key to help your pet find their way back home. 3. Play with your kitten's feet, seriously. Start as early as possible. This will help with nail trimmings. 4. Socialize your puppies to anything and everything. When this is done safely, it can help prevent behavioral problems in the future. 5. Learn to read your pet's behavior. Knowing when they're stressed out, slash scared, slash sick, can really help you avoid dangerous situations. Number three and four here are actually pretty interesting, and they've been mentioned before in other kinds of ways, I think. Essentially, if you want a pet to be used to something, you expose the pet to the thing. Playing with a kitten's feet is actually a really good point, because you gotta clip those nails at some point, and you're gonna have to touch the feet, so might as well get them used to it. Makes sense, but I can understand why someone would overlook that. Story 11. I'm in the middle of training right now, but one thing I see that absolutely destroys me is fish being kept in small tanks or bowls. The idea that fish can be kept in bowls comes from the fact that people in East Asian countries like Japan would temporarily put their fish on display in bowls to show off to guests, and housed them in large ponds most of the time. Westerners assumed such small containers were suitable to house fish in, and this is still widespread today. Not only does a bowl destroy your fish's health due to the lack of air touching the surface per unit volume of water, but the space you're giving your fish is basically comparable to keeping a human in one room the entirety of their lives. 
Fish are smarter than people give them credit for, and they feel pain and emotion more than people give them credit for, too. They can't pull facial expressions that we can empathize with, so their mental well-being is often overlooked. Even small fish need a decent amount of space to live, and things in their tank to hide in or explore. They grow much larger and live much longer than most people think. They absolutely need to be housed in the right accommodation, in the right environment, the amount of fish I've seen being kept on shelves next to speakers is insane, and with the correct amount and type of other fish. It takes a lot of space, time, and money to look after them decently. They're not the low-maintenance pets so many treat them as. Story 12. I'm a CVT with years of experience in ECC and IM. I love my career and I love to help pets. Before we continue with this one, ECC, I think, is emergency and critical care, and IM, I believe, is internal medicine. I looked them up and I am pretty sure, but I'm just trying to cover myself. But yeah, just so you know, because I wasn't sure. Anyway, moving on. Get your pets insured especially your large breed dogs and purebreds. Do it the day you get them, right after their first wellness visit. This saves a lot of heartache during trauma, or when an underlying condition pops up. I use it to cover the cost of my cat's chronic renal failure. If you want to make a home-cooked diet for your pets, please ask for a nutrition consultation from a vet. Facebook lied to you. Our vets spend a ton of time on animal nutrition, and some are even dedicated to it. It's something that the public has a poor grasp on, whether they're going crazy for grain-free or decrying animal byproducts, while buying pig ears and bulldogs. I've seen internet recipes that contain onions, garlic, and other toxic substances too. Your pets depend on you for balanced diets, and we can help with that. We do not support dominance training in pets. Dogs aren't wolves, and feral dogs don't even act like wild wolves. Please hire trainers that use positive reinforcement and follow through at home. Be careful with training aids. That prong collar that totally didn't hurt your wrist in the pet store is going around your poor dog's neck, where his trachea, jugular, and carotid are. If you have to do something medical at home like subcutaneous fluids, medications, insulin injections, or use a feeding tube, and are uncomfortable with it, please tell me. I will go over this with you as many times as it takes. That's what I'm here for. The first few days are always rough and mistakes will happen, but I'm on your team and I can help. Also, if medications like pills are difficult to give, let us know. We can compound a lot of them into flavored liquids or even switch some to transdermal formulas. The thing that breaks my heart with my chronic condition pets is when owners have trouble with a medication and stop it abruptly on their own. Story 13. Lack of dentistry or dental hygiene is probably the main thing I see. Dental cleanings are important. Pets usually need a cleaning at or soon after three years of age and sometimes younger. A teeth cleaning at the groomer is not a dental. I'm talking about an anesthesiized, prophylactic cleaning and polishing, similar to what you get at your human dentist. However, we can't ask your pet to hold still and open its mouth while we take x-rays and clean the teeth and probe to check for pocketing, so anesthesia is necessary. Most veterinary hospitals use up-to-date equipment that provides safe monitoring for your pet. Just be sure to go to a reputable veterinary clinic or an animal dentist. Unlike people, dogs' mouths are very different from one another. Think of a Yorkie versus a French Bulldog versus a Golden Retriever. The structure of the mouth between them is not the same across every dog. Dog. Cats are fairly similar to one another. The small mouths and teeth can often have more problems or need more frequent cleanings. There are a lot of factors that can vary when or how much tartar accumulates, such as diet or dental hygiene treats or teeth brushing. Brushing a dog's teeth less than four times a week is almost ineffective. Dental hygiene treats work, but aren't as effective as a cleaning and polishing. The worse it gets over time, the more expensive it'll be later on. Don't wait till it's too late. And yes, even if you keep up on annual dental cleanings, it is still possible to have other problems like fractured teeth or root exposure or enamel loss from chewing or wearing. Dogs use their mouths like we use our hands, not just to eat but as tools. This has an effect on the teeth too. I got a four-month-old German Shepherd in 2015 and have been trialing Orvet dental chews by giving him one dental treat every single day since I got him. He is now three years old and his teeth are still immaculate. I don't brush his teeth because, yes, I'm lazy about that too, and he hasn't had a dental cleaning. Another German Shepherd that is only a couple weeks apart in age as my dog has already needed two dental cleanings. Another common mistake with pets is obesity, feeding the wrong foods, junk ingredients or unnecessary nutrition. Dogs and cats are fairly simple for feeding and maintaining. Most food manufacturers provide guidance on how much to feed based on weight. If you follow that and your pet starts gaining weight, then you know to change something. They don't eat something different for every meal like we do. It makes it easier to keep track of how much you should feed. Obviously, there are medical conditions that might render this difficult, such as thyroid hormones or metabolism. But generally speaking, a lean pet will have much better chance at remaining healthy. The majority of animals I see with lumps and bumps are overweight or not neutered. 
or both. If you've been a pet owner for several years or maybe more than a decade or two, you'll have noticed that the style of animal medicine has changed significantly. The availability of advanced medicine has increased exponentially, and so has your expectations as a pet owner. We understand this, but what comes with this is better care for your pets to result in longer lifespans while staying healthier longer. Story 14. Emergency slash critical care vet nurse here, with a history of GP work also. One of the major common problems I see is pets without a budget to fall back on. Pets have bodies that can fail in similar ways as people do. Their teeth rot, their bones can break, and they can get cancer. They can get injured unexpectedly, just like we can. Fixing these illnesses and injuries is often possible, but it costs a lot of money. Bills at my clinic are routinely between 600 to 3,000 for things like road traffic accidents, broken limbs from jumping wrong, kidney stones causing blockage, etc. Even ongoing minor problems can end up costing a lot over time, with medication revisits or special dietary requirements. And if you have a flat-faced breed, you're in for a bad time cost-wise, because they have so many more common health problems. The reason I make a big deal about the cost is because it's absolutely horrible when we end up having to euthanize animals because their owners just can't afford an unexpected, multi-thousand dollar bill. Certainly there are cases where spending the money is a bad idea, as the pet may be too unwell to survive with quality of life anyway, but accidents happen. Illnesses develop unexpectedly as pets age. Breed-specific problems can crop up at any time, and many of these issues are fixable or at least manageable, given the appropriate care. Unfortunately, that care must come with a cost. I urge all pet owners to consider their finances when getting a pet. If you don't have much money, don't spend all of it getting a designer dog. Rescue a shelter dog, and you'll have an instant emergency deposit with the rest of the money you would have used to buy it. Pet insurance can be a lifesaver, but make sure you know what you're covered for. A pet savings fund may be a better option for many people, or there's usually finance options available. Anything helps, really. It's really upsetting to have to be the one telling people they can't afford to save their cat or dog. The way I see it, as a person, you should have an emergency fund for yourself, if possible. Anyway, any additional lives you are supporting, whether they be human or animal, should also likewise have an emergency fund. That makes a lot of sense to me, and I also kind of understand how it would be overlooked. But hey, pet owners, make sure you have that emergency fund. And if you don't, consider cheaper options for getting a pet at first, or maybe just not getting one. At least not yet. Story 15. Not a vet, so this isn't scientific or medical advice of any kind, but I'm gonna throw this in because it's important and doesn't get emphasized enough. Taking your pets to the vet is part of being a responsible, loving owner. Too many of my friends and family members avoid taking their sometimes clearly sick and or overweight pets to the vet because it's too damn expensive. Your pet doesn't deserve to suffer and be in poor health because you made the irresponsible decision to adopt a pet without checking your budget first. Veterinarians are doctors who deserve to be paid fairly for their work, and all pets deserve to be loved and cared for. Story 16. Here's my two cents on exotic pets and pocket pets as a veterinarian. Please, for the love of God, look up the basic husbandry and nutrition for an exotic pet before you go and purchase a sugar glider, hamster, iguana, bearded dragon, etc. The husbandry problems are 90% of an exotic vet's business, honestly. People buy pocket pets slash exotics thinking they'll be super low-key. I argue they're much harder because of the delicate balance you have to strike. They have specific hide box needs, humidity needs, special bedding, heating requirements, basking areas, and special diets. They take a lot more work than your normal cat or dog. You would not believe the number of iguanas and lizards I've seen come in on emergency that are like rubber chickens, having zero bone density because the owners have no idea that calcium supplementation and UVB lighting were necessary. Also, guinea pigs must have vitamin C supplementation. No, the pet store does not sell you everything you need when you pick up your new pet. The kid at the pet store not telling you what you need is not an excuse and it is your responsibility to research how to take care of your pet. Other mistakes people make is treating their exotic pet like a small version of a dog or a cat. They have a dog that is super friendly and would never harm a fly, so they let their bird hang out in the same room as the dog out of its cage. Shocker, the dog one day decides the bird is gonna be lunch. Pocket pets and domestic pets are not friends, and never will be. Another common exotic pet mistake is not realizing how expensive their care can be. That $10 hamster also needs to go to the veterinarian for an annual checkup. Just because the pet was cheap doesn't mean you shouldn't have at least a few hundred saved up for the annual checkup, and then an additional minimum few hundred for illnesses. If you can't afford their basic care, you can't afford a pet, period. Most common mistake is not realizing you absolutely must be proactive with a sick exotic pet. They are prey animals for the most part, and designed to hide their illness. Once they show clinical signs, they're very sick and oftentimes it can be too late. Wait and see often leads to a dead pet. Story 17. 
I'll throw in one that we're currently having a run on at work. Small breed puppies with broken limbs because A. Their owners have no idea how to hold a squirmy puppy and drop it from their human chest height. B. Their owners have no concept of what an acceptable height for their small breed puppy with the jelly bones to be left unattended atop of is. Here's a hint. It isn't the height of any of your furniture. Or C. Their owners flat out sit or step on them. Actually the least common, but it has happened. If you would like to spend a metric crap ton of money, ensure your pet gets intimately familiar with the inside of a surgical ward, weekly or better for as long as it takes for the bone to be stable, and eliminate all the romping and jumping puppy fun from its young days, oh, by all means. Hold it up in the air like a slippery eel, and squeal and let go when it does a wiggle, or leave it hanging out on your three-foot-high bed while you go to find your phone to take its picture or something. Otherwise, perhaps be a bit more responsible. Also, as a pet peeve, your male cat has a tiny urethra that can be easily blocked and any number of things, stones, crystals, or spasms can do it. Know how often and how much your boy pees. Clean the litter box daily, and if something isn't right, get his butt to a vet ASAP. It hurts a lot, and besides that, he can suffer kidney failure, bladder rupture, and death. Pee problems are a five-alarm red lights flashing emergency. If you have a male cat, you 100% need to have an emergency fund for this very instance. Story 18. Almost finished vet student here. Had to give an exotics shout out. 1. Rabbits are never low in calcium and do not need it supplemented in the diet. They should not have salt licks and avoid alfalfa hay slash pellets, as this leads to urinary stones. So many rabbit foods have this in them and it's a huge problem, and often the workers at pet stores will lead you to them as a great choice. Don't be fooled. 2. Reptiles need UVB light. The package simply saying UV on it or UVA isn't enough. The lamp has to have UVB. It should be positioned to shine directly into the cage unobstructed by glass, and should not be placed way above the cage. This is especially important in a young reptile, and the bulbs do need to be replaced every so often. 3. Most pet birds, African greys, macaws, etc. should be receiving 40-ish percent pelleted food. The rest should be fresh fruits and veggies. All seed slash nut diets, or even most, will lead to obesity, which is already very prevalent in our feathered friends, and can literally have, if not more, their lifespan. These are, of course, very general rules, but very common and sad cases to deal with, since often the owners are just doing what they think is best, and are led astray. It honestly boggles my mind that so many of these products are allowed to be on the market, when they're so misleading, and can seriously harm the well-being of our pets. It is also surprising to me that food can be sold to pets that is just bad for them. That's a very human thing to do if we think about it, though. Like, how much stuff do we eat that's slowly ending our lives? Oh yeah, almost all of it. But really, diet is super important for any pet. Exotic pets especially, as we've learned here. So just make sure you know what your friend is eating. Anyway, that is the last story we have for today. This one, very instructional, informative. If you have a pet or are thinking about getting a pet, I hope this has helped you. But for now, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I will see you in the next one.